Welcome back to Cafe Racer Garage. I'm Dan and in this video I want to explain six things to avoid when purchasing a motorcycle for a project. Whether you're going to build a scrambler or a cafe racer or a bobber or a tracker or any other style of motorcycle, I want to tell you the things that I look for when I go hunting for a motorcycle. So let's get into it. <laughs> So like I said, this is the things that I look for. This list is not complete, it's not finished in any way, it's just a bunch of things that I think are important. Uh, now the first thing is, has the bike been dropped? I go and look at the bike and you go and look at the telltale things that you would think, has the bike been dropped and has things been replaced to try and hide that or to try and make it look back to the way it was so it doesn't look so ugly with the scratches and dents and broken parts. So this is the bike that I'm gonna use for the demonstration and it is the CX500. A uh, few things have been replaced on the bike, but mostly it's stock, so it's a perfect example. Uh, and let's say I've never seen this bike before and I'm looking for a bike that's been dropped. The first thing I'm gonna go for is the engine. Uh, it's probably the most important thing to look at. If the bike has been dropped, then you're gonna have probably, you know, issues with here uh, and anything that's sticking out, if you can pretty much run a line from uh, the bike from this angle straight down and you just check out anything that's been scratched like the forks, down the bottom, uh, you know, like I said, the top here, the exhaust, the pegs could have been replaced. Uh, a bike of this era, I'd be surprised if it hasn't been dropped a few times. Uh, and it really depends on how badly it's been dropped. If the scratches are pretty much, you know, just a little bit, then that's fine. But if they're really gouged out, then obviously it's been dropped at speed. And I would probably avoid that uh, if it's bad enough. So that's the first thing that I would recommend checking out. Walk around the bike, spend some time, and just assess to see if there's anything out of place that's really noticeable, like a side cover. Uh, let's say, for instance, like this bike over here. If this side cover has been replaced and it's real shiny compared to the rest of the bike, then obviously it probably has been dropped and they've replaced that because they couldn't get the original stock part. The small things are superficial, like, you know, these things could be broken or scratched. Uh, you know, the bar end parts could be scratched, the handlebars could have been replaced. Not a big drama, it's more or less the engine and the expensive parts to replace, which is what you really want to focus on, because keep in mind this is a project for you. So the next thing that I would probably look at is the forks. Uh, make sure that they haven't been bent, and if they are, they could be bent just a little bit, or they could be bent a lot. And how you can check, just straight off the bat, is just have a look at the back of the tire, the back of the front tire, and the gap between there and the actual engine. If that gap, and you look online, you can just check other bikes that are the same, and just have a look at that gap. And if it's been bent excessively, you'll see that gap like shortened. Uh, and if it's only just a little bit, then you may not even notice it. You may notice it on a ride, but you may not notice it apart from that. Um, now, if you're gonna do a whole front end conversion, then it's no big deal, because you're probably gonna swap that out anyway. But I would really, second guess it if it's been a pretty bad bend on the front end. Uh, you don't know what other damage has been done. So just another thing to check. So what I mean by um, bent forks and the gap is the gap between here and here. If that gap is, you know, quite small compared to the ones you've seen online, if you're looking at the same sort of bike, then you know that the forks are bent. Generally speaking, you can tell by just looking at them, but not always, not if it's just a little bit. So just keep that in mind, keep an eye on that when you're looking at bikes because, um, you know, the owners aren't always honest, unfortunately. So the next thing is oil leaks. Uh, I always go around the bike and just check for oil leaks. Not that they are a bad thing because bikes of this era are going to have oil leaks at some point. Uh, you're going to have to replace things. If the bike's been sitting for a long period of time and it hasn't been run and then you run it, the actual rubbers would have dried out a little bit and then you try and wear them in again and you know things can crack and oil leaks can start so i'll show you what i mean uh what to look for so if i'm looking at this bike i want to check that there's no major oil leaks but i'm going to check the entire bike anyway so starting at the front the forks hold oil so you want to run your hand under it and just make sure that there's no obviously bad leaks that are coming from that or around the actual top seal here uh, like once again, you could be replacing the forks anyway, so it might not be a big deal to you, but it's just something to check. The calipers, they also have oil in them and the lines that obviously go up to the reservoir. So that's at the front. And then you work on your way back, you've got the engine, and this is where you really want to concentrate because some of these seals here can be very, very extensive to 
take apart and put back together again. And if you don't know what you're doing and you have to pay someone to do this, it can get expensive. So, you know, like a seal gasket that goes all the way through there, run your hand under the bike and just see if there's anything major, like these gaskets, that gasket, um, you know, something that's maybe this around here, the actual head gasket, the tappet cover gasket, not such a big deal. It's pretty much easy to do, but any of those other ones take time, therefore cost money. Uh, the next thing going further back would be if you've got disc brakes at the rear, then check your calipers on there. But for this here, this is the final drive. It holds oil. So check you've got no leak on that. That's pretty much it. I wouldn't worry too much about uh, anything else, but they're your major ones that you really, really want to be concerned about because they're going to cost a lot of money to repair or replace or fix. So for the next one, it is buying a bike in a complete unit. Try and buy a complete bike that's all in one piece. Don't buy a bike in a box. And I've mentioned this on the channel a few times before. And if you do decide to go down that road of buying a bike in a box, I wouldn't recommend doing it. If you're experienced and this isn't your first project and you know what to look for, you've got spare parts at home, then fair enough. Yes, go for it if you know what you're doing. But for anyone who's never done this before and it's your first project, please don't buy a bike in a box because the crucial parts could be the most expensive ones that are missing. And if you go and buy a any bike, any old bike, and you take it apart and you start selling the parts off, you'll probably get more for the parts as they are separate than what the entire bike is worth in one piece. Not always, but generally speaking, the parts can be very expensive to purchase individually. So try and buy a complete bike. That's the one thing that I always recommend doing. So the next thing that I do is I check the actual VIN number on the bike uh, for a few reasons. It could be stolen, it could be a write-off, a uh, repairable write-off maybe. Uh, it'll give you a little bit of history about the bike. Each country, each state could be a little bit different, but here in Queensland, Australia, there's a thing called Revs Check. And it's a website you go to and you put the VIN number in and it will just, you pay, I think it's like $25 or somewhere around there. And it'll give you a bit of information about the bike's history if it's been registered for a period of time in Queensland. Uh, and so that's awesome to do. I know there's a clear title and things like that in the States that you need to make sure that your bike has when you purchase it. Definitely check that out before you hand over any money uh, because there's one thing that could really, really destroy your day if you purchase something and you realize you can't even get it registered. Or worse, if you spent a lot of money and time on actually putting this thing together and then you can't do anything with it but use it off-road. So the last thing that I'm gonna tell you to do is check the engine to make sure it's cold when you first walk up to the bike. Uh, if you're going to purchase a bike and you know that the bike runs, make sure you can start it cold. If you can't start it cold, then it's probably the owner's warmed it up for you because it has got a few issues with the cold starts. And you want to know that. Like, it might not be a deal breaker, but you just want to know that it has a few issues, the carby might need work. Uh, you don't know what could be wrong with it. it could be something small, could be something major, you just don't know, but you really want to actually get it started while it's cold, and then if you can ride it, go for a ride. Take it for a spin, see how it feels, and so on, because you are purchasing this thing, and if it's not registered, then it kind of makes it hard to take it for a spin. So those six items, the six things that I recommend you look for on a motorcycle before you purchase it, uh, that is just a small list of things to check. Uh, I did write down a bunch of other things that I put in here and some of these are just like common sense but there might be a bit of gold in there for you as well so what I wrote down was check the oil obviously the oil color make sure that there is oil in there um, disc rotors make sure that there's no warping or problems with those front and rear if it's got rear uh, discs and tires make sure you can sort of see the age of them if you do intend on keeping the tires that are on the bike uh, there's usually a stamp on the side of the tire, which if you can't read the age of the, the stamp, then you might have to go online and you can pretty much work out the age from what's written on the side of the tire. Uh, lights, make sure they all work if you intend on keeping the bike as is for a little while. If not, then you know just check the wiring and make sure there's no problems with that. Um, bend or buckled rims, check that none of them have major you know buckles from hitting a gutter or anything like that. Uh, chain and sprockets, that's another thing that's huge. If your bike has chains and it's not shaft drive, then check that the sprockets and chain aren't completely worn and need replacing because then you can get a couple of hundred dollars off 
the purchase price for you know having to replace those things uh, rusty inside the tank now having a rusty tank is not huge there is ways I've done a video on how to get rid of the rust inside the tank quite easily um, but it's something to check when you purchase the bike to make sure it's not that bad a compression test if you're able to borrow a compression tester or maybe even get a cheap one to do a compression test on a bike is huge if you have the ability to do it do it it's great it'll tell you whether those cylinders are equal or whether the compression's low or you know it'll be good to know if you're going to purchase a bike water coolant was another one that i mentioned these cx bikes are water cooled not all bikes are but it's good to check just look over the system to make sure that there is coolant in it um, you know if it's really really low then obviously the guy hasn't been maintaining it properly or it's using coolant something to think about and the fork seals like I've already mentioned the fork seals earlier on just run your hands over the forks and just make sure that you know if the seals need replacing and the bike is complete and he's trying to sell it as a complete bike then maybe you can knock a little bit of money off it to try and say hey this, the fork seals need replacing you know it just gives you a bit of leverage but that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found something in there that was useful for you actually building your own cafe racer or scrambler or tracker or bobber, whatever it is style of motorcycle that you want to build. Hopefully this video was helpful to know what to purchase or what to look for when you're about to purchase one and get started. Have an awesome day and I'll chat with you in the next video.